One day, while Moses was tending his sheep out in the middle of the Sinai Desert, he noticed off in the distance a, a spontaneously combusting bush. Now, you don't see that every day, but he also noticed that the bush was burning in a very unconventional way. It was, it was not being consumed by the fire. And then he noticed something really unusual. He noticed the figure of a person in the flames. It's described for us as the angel of the Lord. Theologically, most scholars believe that anytime you see the appearance of the angel of the Lord in the Hebrew Bible, it is a reference to the pre-incarnate person of Christ. So Moses sees this spontaneously burning metaphysical pyrotechnics on this bush, sees a person inside, and does what any of us red-blooded men would say. I've got to go see what that is. He said, that's amazing. And he goes over to that bush, and as he approaches the bush, the voice of God calls out his name. Perhaps that's how he knew it was the voice of God, because when a burning bush with a human figure inside actually knows who you are, it's a pretty good guess that God is involved. God goes on to prove that it is, in fact, him who is speaking to him. And he finally says to Moses, I have seen the oppression of my people. I have heard their cries. And I am aware of their suffering and slavery in Egypt. And Moses, I am calling you to go to Egypt and set my people free. To which Moses promptly said, no, <laughs> no, 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 I, I'm not going to go, I, no. Now we look at that and we say, how could you say no to this amazing appearance of God, to all of this data and all of this information that, that invites Moses to change the course of history for millions of people? that God is inviting him to this amazing thing, and Moses says no, and we, we think, well, if, you know, if there was a burning bush with a person inside, and they knew my name, and they said, I want you to go do this, we like to think, well, yeah, I would do that. Sure, I'm, I'm in, sign me up, I'm gonna go. But Moses said no, not just once, but five times he says no to the voice of God speaking to him in the desert from a burning bush. Now, any reasonable person in that moment would question the veracity of this request, and, and any reasonable person would be scared. And Moses had every reason to be scared. He knew Pharaoh. He had grown up in the royal courts. He knew of Pharaoh's anger. He knew of the wrath of Pharaoh and the Egyptian people. He had been living in the desert for 40 years because he was afraid to return to Egypt. And he knew how stiff-necked and stubborn the Hebrew people were. And he knew that for him to go and, and to appear before Pharaoh and say, Hey, uh, Pharaoh, can you let my people go? I mean, I realize there's two million slaves, and if you let us all go, your, your basic infrastructure of your nation will collapse. Your economy and your empire will turn upside down. But would you mind kind of letting us go? He knew that that was a suicide mission. And so he said no to the call of God. Each of us has a call of God on our life. We may be inclined to say, well, no, there's nothing special about me, but I believe each of us has the call of God to make a difference in the world that we live in. Each of us matters. Each of our lives is significant, not just to God, but to the population of the planet that we live on. Each of us has the call of God on our life. So what will it take for you to say yes to that call?